Okay, welcome to UP Math. This time I'm going to discuss with you the concept of ratio and proportion as applied to mensuration and calculation. So after watching this video, students are expected to acquire the skills needed to perform the activities required in mensuration and calculation. So this is actually intended for you, TLE students, okay? So start watching and learn. Okay, let's start with the definition of a proportion. A proportion is two ratios that are set equal to one another. Now, what are the parts of a proportion? We have the extremes and the means. No? Now, the extremes are the outermost part of the equation. So, these are A and D. No? And the means are the innermost part of the equation which are B and C. Now, why is it important to identify these parts? No, Because we have the fundamental law of proportion which states that the product of extremes is equal to the product of the means. So, we are going to use this formula okay, to identify whether the two ratios are proportional. No? which I'm going to illustrate in the following examples. So let's have an example. Are the following ratios proportional? So to show that these are proportional, as I said, you just need to apply the fundamental law of proportion, no? which says that the product of the extremes is equal to the product of the means. No? So let's go to letter A. Is the product of 3 and 15 equal to the product of 9 and 5? So let's see. 3 times 15, is that equal to 9 times 5, no? Now, 3 times 15 is 45. 9 times 5 is also 45. So, they are equal, no? So, the answer is yes, okay? Now, let's go to letter D. Let's see whether the product of 4 and 12 is equal to the product of 10 and 6. So 4 times 12, is that equal to 10 times 6? Okay, 4 times 12 is 48. 10 times 6 is 60. So they are not equal, so the answer is no. Okay? Oh, let's go to letter C. Is the product of 8 and 30 equal to the product of 14 and 10? So 8 times 30, is that equal to 14 times 10? Now, 8 times 30 is 240, and 14 times 10 is 140. So again, they are not equal, so the answer is no. Now, let's go to letter D. Is the product of 2 times 80 equal to 16 and 10? So 2 times 80 is that equal to 16 and 10? Okay. So 2 times 80 is 160. And 16 times 10 is 160. So they are equal. So the answer is yes. Okay. So ganyan lang yung kadali, no? Okay, now, so let us see if we can apply this to real-life situations, no? Uh, as I will uh, illustrate in the next example, okay? Problem solving tayo. So let's go to problem one. The ratio of water when mixed with lemon juice is 1 to 3. If the water is 14 cups, how many cups of lemon juice should be used? So you are given the ratio of 1 to 3. Now, when you say the ratio of water with lemon juice is 1 to 3, 
It means that 1 is for the water, so let us label that as W1, and 3 is for the lemon juice, no? so let us label that as L sub 1. Now, why is labeling important? Because we cannot interchange these two. No? Pag itong nagpalit, wala na, mali na tayo. Okay? So, by applying the fundamental law of proportion, this must be equal to the ratio of W2 and L sub 2. Now, ano ba yung W2 and L sub 2? This is now the new set of quantities with the same ratio. No? Dapat 1 is to 3 then. So, 14 cups is now our W sub 2, okay? So, how many cups of lemon juice are needed now if there are 14 cups of water? So, L sub 2 is missing, okay? So, again, by applying the fundamental law of uh, proportion, the product of the extremes is equal to the product of the means, diba? So, L sub 2 times 1 must be equal to 3 times 14. Now, L sub 2 times 1 is L sub 2, and 3 times 14 is 42. So, 42 cups of lemon juice are needed if there are 14 cups of water. Okay? That's it. Okay, let's continue with number 2. In diluting vinegar with water, the ratio should be 2 is to 5. If there are 25 cups of water, how many cups of vinegar should be there? Solution. So, we are given the ratio 2 is to 5. So, 2 is for the vinegar which we will label as V sub 1. And 5 is for the water which we will label as W sub 1. So to make a proportion, this must be equal to the ratio of V sub 2 is to W sub 2. Okay, now we're asked to find the number of cups of vinegar if there are 25 cups of water. So W sub 2 is equal to 25 and V sub 2 is missing, no? So again, by the fundamental law of proportion, the product of the extremes must be equal to the product of the means. So 2 times 25 must be equal to 5 times V sub 2. Now 2 times 25 is 50. So that is equal to 5 v sub 2. So to solve for v sub 2, we divide both sides by 5. So v sub 2 is equal to 10. Okay, so there should be 10 cups of vinegar if there are 25 cups of water. And that's it. No? Okay, I hope you find this video useful and relevant. So, if you want to see more videos like this and explore more in math, please share, like, and subscribe. No? Thank you for watching.